Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial of easy programming. I know I've been gone for a few weeks. Uh, I've had a few things that I had to take care of before I could make another tutorial. But I'm back for my official 20th easy programming tutorial. In this tutorial I show you a little bit more about void functions, about how they work, how you can use them. And I'm going to show you how arrays can be useful when you're using void functions as well. What you see in front of you is the parallel array tutorial that I did a few weeks ago. It's a copy and paste of it. If you want to see what that program is, you can go on the website easyprogramming.net. Uh, click on the parallel arrays tutorial. The tutorial should be there. Uh, the video should be there as, as well as the code. After this tutorial is done, I will be putting the f finalized code of this void function using parallel arrays and functions on the website as well. So on this program, we have four four variables. Uh, we have the name, where we enter the name of three students, three test grades for test number one, three test grades for test number two, and the average. This program calculates the average in the equation over here. In a for loop, it runs three times because there are three test grades, and it displays them in a table here in a, in a second for loop. Actually, that's actually the third for loop because we have to input the data in the first for loop here. So before I do anything else, I'll run it and I'll show you what it looks like. So it says please enter student's name. We'll do Mary. First test grade is 100. Second test grade is 90. The average should be 95. And we'll do Larry. We'll do 90 and 88. The average will be an 89. And then we'll do Harry. We'll do 75 and 65. The average should be a 70. And there you have it, 95, 89, and 70. I'm keeping this uh, s this simple. Uh, if you notice, if you put in decimal points, if you want to get a decimal point average, it won't work. That's because I'm using integer over here for the test grades. But it's just to keep things simple. You can change it to float if you want. You can change it to double if you want. It really doesn't matter. This just to p prove the point that you know it works. Uh, so here I'm going to introduce a few functions. I'm going to actually have two functions. One will calculate this the average and the second one will calculate the total average and send it back to the main program is, is, uh, through the parameter list. I'll show you how that works as well. The first thing I want to do is declare the two functions. They'll be, both be void functions. So the void calc, short for calculation. You can name it anything you want. It's just a name. Open parentheses. Remember int test1, int test2, and float average. Remember to close it with a semicolon. I'll explain this a little bit more. As you can see, the brackets are here, but there's nothing inside. You can actually put the the number three inside for the three arrays, the three-part array. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I like doing it without putting anything inside, just in case this number has to change later on. Uh, and once again, you can name these anything you want. You can name it to test three and test five, and then average one. As lo these are just consistent with the main program in lo by location and not by actual name. The next function will be void total. This is where I'll do the total average, where I'll take the average of all three tests and av get an average from them. So we'll do float average and then float ampersand total average. Uh, you may be confused. I have I don't believe I used this in my last tutorial, but ampersand allows you to send a variable back to the main program through the parameter list. In a value returning function, the only way to do that is to have a return statement there where you do return A or return 1 for true. This will return the value of total average through the parameter list because the total average won't have won't be declared inside the main inside the variable actually. Since we have a new variable in the function I'm going to declare here so the float total average once again you can name this to anything you want it really doesn't matter and because this is not an array we don't need a bracket with the three inside it'll just be one value and some of you may be wondering why am I not re referencing the test one test two and the average and all the other arrays and that's because if it's an array and it's in a void function it's it gets referenced automatically and why I say is because you could have a hundred different variables. You don't want to reference every single one. That can get pretty messy. 
uh, so the so C++ does it automatically for you so you don't have to worry about that if total average is an array too I wouldn't need the ampersand here I just keep it as an array so we come down to the program here here is the prompts where we get the name of the student the test the first test grade and the second test grade inside this for loop so the first thing we want to do is call the function we'll do calc tell the function that we're sending down the values of test 1 test 2 and average remember that you don't have to declare the brackets inside this because you're just sending down one value at a time we'll be moving this into a void function about now so I'm gonna cut and cut and paste that a little bit later but first I'm going to copy this up to the semicolon but not the semicolon itself you can just type it up if you feel comfortable but I like copying so that there aren't any mistakes in spelling or typos the open bracket and then I'm going to highlight the actual equation or the for the calculation I'm going to cut it you know control X so you can do a you know right click and then it's in the function I'm going to close the function but remember that I isn't declared inside this we have to declare it as a local variable for this to work so we'll do int I you can do it inside the for loop as well it really doesn't matter but uh, to explain a little bit more uh, the name is entered here test 1 and test 2 grades are entered here the test 1 test 2 and average will be sent down to this to the void function here they'll be calculated in here you know, you know it's pretty simple and average I will be sent back into this variable into that value actually and you'll have your average for each student and like I said this, since this is an array you don't have to reference it uh, here we have the output and I said before that I want to do a total average where I want to take the average of all the students averages and see what the class average is so I'm going to have to call another function here so I'm going to do total average since they're sending back average and total average remember that these have to be consistent by val uh, by location with these the value variables here can be anything inside the function parameter list but these variables have to be consistent with whatever you declared up here so I'm going to do a cop copy and I'm going to go below this function and do a void open and I'm going to set up a new equation I'm going to have to declare int i int total and total total is an accumulator so I'm going to do total equals to zero I'm going to have to do a for loop scroll down for i equals to zero i excuse me zero i is less than or equal to two since it'll run three times and i plus plus and here we'll do total equals to total plus average i so every time the program runs excuse me every time the program runs it'll take the average of i let's say it was 90 89 and 85 right or 75 so it'll do 90 the average the value of total is 0 at first and it'll do 90 plus 0 which is 90 the total will equal to 90 it'll be 90 plus 89 which is uh, 159 and then it'll add the last value to that as well and then we're gonna send back the value of total average not total and there's one part of the equation left will do total average which is declared inside the parameter list here we'll do equals to total divided by 3 that should work uh, I'll actually de change this to float just in case there's a decimal point uh, and that should be it remember you have to close the functions I'm gonna go back up to the main program and I'm going to add another line uh, to make it neat I'm going to do a couple C out ENDLs ENDL, ENDL to add a few line, a few lines, and then I'll do uh, last C out, C out. The overall average of the grades is. We'll do total average. And the ENDL. Uh, you can do another ENDL for an extra line between that and the system pass. 
and this looks like a complete program um, I'll go through this again here this is the where you declare your first function that value sends that function sends it to this void function here where, the, where it calculates the averages it goes back here and this function is run where it goes down here and it does the total and then finds the total average and sends it back by reference through the parameter list which comes up to here and we're just taking the value from here wherever this is and replacing it inside the C out which is here uh, let's run it this should work there were some build errors let's see what I have total average I think I spelled something wrong yeah there we go total average sorry typo total well I can't spell today I'm sorry total average there we go now it runs <laughs> okay Mary we'll do first test score is 100 second test score is 90 the average will be a 95 we'll do Larry first test score is a 90 and then 80 which will be an 85 and then Harry which will be a 80 and a 70 which will be a 75 for press enter here you have the average score of Mary is 95 which is 90 and 100 divided by 2 you have 85 here which is 80 and 90 divided by 2 and then you have 75 which is 70 and 80 divided by 2 the total average of the grades is 85 which is correct because this would be the middle value of 75 and 95 and as a shortcut of getting the average and well there you have it here in this program you learn how to use multiple functions multiple void functions you learn about arrays and functions and you have referencing through functions you have quite a few variables Parallel arrays are pretty easy, and if you can implement them in a function, it's also really easy. Once again, you don't have to send the values back through the parameter list like I did here with the total average. You can actually display the output right inside the void function, which is great about the void function. You don't have to return anything at all. You can actually have a main program where you just declare functions like I did here with calc and total, and then just let the functions handle all the work. It's pretty simple. Well, I hope you enjoyed my 20th tutorial of easy programming. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. I will be posting the code up for this program shortly. And thank you for your support. Remember to subscribe.